Welcome to church tonight. Glad to have you all here. If you have a songbook, turn to page number 26. Page number 26, Come Thou Fount. We'll stand. We'll sing the first and the last verse. And don't mind, uh, Brother Zach is not here again tonight. He's going to be back Thursday, so you have to deal with second string uh, song leader. But we'll get there. Page 26, 1 and 2, or 1 and 3. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. On the third, O oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering hearts to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Hey, Amen. Good job singing. It's good to have you all here. And uh, we had a good time on Monday. We had, I think, over 50 folks here. We had a softball game. And uh, we did veterans against civilians, which was a lot of fun, and uh, went all the way down to the last inning and the last out, and uh, I think Mrs. Madrano was our hero. And uh, we thought for sure she was an easy out, but she wasn't. And uh, she, I think she hit in the winning run and uh, scored, the winning run. scored the winning run. Yeah, it was good. But uh, praise God for it. And uh, we had a good time of food and fellowship. And, uh, but it's good to have you all here tonight, and let's open in prayer. Lord, I thank you for being such a good God to us, Lord. I thank you for this church. I thank you for these people. Thank you for the time that we have uh, during the middle of the week to get together and uh, fellowship and sing and pray and uh, hear your word. And I pray, Lord, you'd bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. If you turn to page 155, 155 at Calvary. We'll sing the first, the second, and the last, page 155. Years I spend in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. On the second, by God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned till my guilty soul imploring turn to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. On the last, oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. And there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Amen. 
Amen. Good job singing. We've got a few announcements, uh, but before we get to our announcements, we'd like to introduce our guests that are visiting with us tonight. It's good to have Miss Jessica here with us, or Miss Jess. This is uh, Kaylee and um, Brooklyn and Zachariah's mom. Let's give her a hand. Glad she's here. And uh, the, the plan is, if everything goes to plan, she's going to get baptized after the service, so I'm really proud of her, and uh, we're excited about that. And then in the back row here, we have, is it Larry and Peggy and Mr. Wall uh, from South Carolina. These are Ashley, this is Ashley's father and his uh, friends that, from South Carolina. Let's give them a hand. Glad they're all here. And Ashley's been riding our bus the last few weeks, and uh, we've really enjoyed having her in church, and she's been a blessing. Any other first-time visitors or first-time visitors or first time in a long time? All right, but I do have something special. Tonight we have a baptismal certificate for Miss Emily. So if you'd like to come up and get this, let's give her a hand. We're proud of her following the Lord and believers' baptism. That's always special. And then uh, I have sad news but, but glad news at the same time. Uh, Mrs. Freeman got to celebrate two Independence Days on Monday. First, as an American, and second, she went home to be with the Lord. Uh, she, of course, last July, she was given six weeks to live. And I believe she was 84 years old, something along those lines. But uh, she went to, to be with the Lord on Monday. And uh, we thank God for heaven. And uh, the last time I got to see her, she was bedridden, but she still had the most beautiful smile uh, that you could you could imagine, and uh, we we'll pray for the Freeman family. They're uh, right now tentatively. We haven't heard back, but it looks like July 16th is going to be the funeral, a Saturday at 11 a.m. It won't be here. It's going to be at the cemetery. She wanted a graveside service, so we're going to honor her wishes. And once I find out more information, I will let you know. And uh, Lady Soul Winning, Thursday at 10 a.m. If you have any questions, you can talk to Mrs. Cushman about that. And I uh, heard it's a, a great time for the ladies to get together. And the Women's Missionary Society, who raised, I think, a little over $200 on Sunday night with their ice cream and uh, brownies and watermelon uh, for the missionaries, they're having a fellowship on July 8th. That's this Friday at 6 p.m. The theme is All American, and sign up for the supper is on the back on the table. And Mrs. White will be speaking. Please come and, and pray and learn more about our missionaries. Then on Saturday, we have soul winning in the bus ministry at 930. We meet for a challenge from God's word, get teamed up and go soul winning. And then please mark your calendars and plan ahead. Pastor Jeff Fugit will be with us Monday, July uh, 25th and Tuesday, July 26th. Monday night will be 7 p.m. Tuesday night, we'll have a 3 p.m. afternoon service uh, for the Preacher's Fellowship, followed by a 515 supper. All are welcome. We want you to come. Uh, Pastor Josh is smoking two turkeys and two hams. Or one ham? Baking two hams and smoking two turkeys. And uh, so you don't want to miss that. It's going to be some good food. 515 on Tuesday night. And then we'll have a 6 p.m. service. And then Wednesday night, we are not going to have a service that week because Brother Ed Swartz is coming with the Commonwealth Tour Group. And they're going to be here on Thursday night, the 28th, 6 p.m. service with Pastor Ed Swartz and the Commonwealth Baptist Tour Group. And I just knew if we had a Wednesday night service, no one would come to the Thursday night one. So I'm going to let you have Wednesday night off so we can go on Thursday night and I'll be back together uh, again on that Thursday night. And if you are really hurt and offended by that, that's fine. There's plenty of other churches you can go to on Wednesday night if you'd like to. And you are welcome to do so. And ladies, the next Bible study will be on Saturday, August 6th at 1.30 p.m. If you have not joined yet, you are welcome. Let the church office know so we can order you a book. The suggested donation for the book is $10 to help cover the cost there. All right, that's all our announcements. We'll have Pastor Josh come with our missionary letter. It's a nice missionary letter from Andrew Amora Steers, missionaries to Tasmania, Australia. It says, Dear Pastor and Praying Friends, this is one of those prayer letters that should give all who read it reasons to rejoice in the Lord. It is one that answers prayers of many of you, which is why we daily praise the Lord. My visa arrived on May 18th, and we flew out of Australia for Chicago via Abu Dhabi two days later, arriving in America on May 21st. Laura saw her first doctor on May 23rd. In a short time we have been here, she has had multiple appointments, tests, scans, and infusions. 
She started her first chemotherapy treatment this past Wednesday. The, the medical profession considers Laura terminal and without any hope of recovery. Although she looks well, scans show that the cancer is in her lymph nodes, lungs, liver, spleen, and all throughout her bones. We are trusting the Lord to heal her in spite of the prognosis given by doctors. We do not have time to mention all the ways the Lord has gone before us, providing perfectly for our needs, including a wheelchair ramp where we are staying. For me personally, waiting on the Lord was a lesson that I have learned again. Admittedly, patience has never been my strong point, but more of a case of, Lord, teach me patience, but I need it now. Even in the midst of Laura's own cancer trials, God has used her to remind me of this passage like Psalm 27, 14. Thankfully, even while waiting since February, this did not take away the ever-present need to be soul conscious. Prior to leaving Australia during our flights over here, as, as well as since arriving in America, souls have been sought for Jesus. One example is that of JR, who drove us to Hammond, Indiana, after landing at O'Hare Airport. Quizzed about his eternal destiny, he acknowledged he was a sinner and, and insisting that he believed in God, though thinking his good works would help him. In the end, he was happy to hear of his salvation being a gift and graciously accepted a church tract, though he, he's saying he would read it, but stopping short of making that all-important decision to pray and accept Christ. Thank you for your continued prayer and support all these months, and God is good. The truth of Romans 8.28 still holds true. In his great love and mercy, Brother Andrew Steers. All right, we'll have our ushers come forward for our Wednesday night offering. And this is the first Wednesday night of the month, so everything that comes in tonight goes towards our bus ministry and buying fuel. We have one bus uh, going in for, an ins or went in for an inspection, and it needs some things done to it. So we'll need to, you know, fix that bus up, get it so we can get another sticker on it, get it back on the road. And, of course, the price of diesel is going down, so we thank God for that. And, uh, Brother Todd, would you please pray for the offering? If you need a prayer sheet, please raise your hands. If we have any extra, the ushers will get you one. Brother Ed needs one over here. Anyone else need a prayer sheet? All right, looks like the ushers did a good job getting, getting them out. And under uh, healing, if you could put Mrs. Regina Hutter. She had surgery, and she's supposed to stay off it for at least two weeks and pray that she does and heals properly. And also... Uh, circle the turbides under custody battle under general and add Katie turbide. She has a CT scan on July 20th. And then also Joe and Joanne turbide. And under unspoken, if you could add Ricky Walter under unspoken. All right. Anyone else have a prayer request? Unspoken for Timothy. Unspoken for Timothy Peterson. 
or as we call him on the bus, Second Timothy. Pray for him. Miss Emily? Pray for Miss Emily, uh, for her unspoken. Brother Leonard? Cindy Conrad and Al for recovering from COVID and Jim Jorgensen for health and safety. That reminded me, I got a call today. Pastor Jules is going to be here with us on July 17th on Sunday night. So Pastor Jules will be here with us from missionary to Haiti. So, babe? Yes, you can add or take Rachel Berry off under pregnancy and little Sarah Berry was born and uh, doing well. What's that? Add Rachel Berry for recovery. I believe she had a C-section, correct? Miss Joanne? Yes, continue praying for Joanne Susie for healing. Miss Lisa? For Wendy, for her health. Her friend, Wendy. Making our way this way. Yes, sir, Mr. Wall. Absolutely. Pray for Mr. Wall and Larry and Peggy as they travel. They're going back, and Ashley and her mom and brothers, especially strength for her mom. And what was the one? I'm missing one. Someone had a health issue. Craig Ward. Craig Ward under health. Miss Barbara. Kim, Kalia, and Cameron. In circle, Miss Barbara's unspoken, Barbara O'Neill, and three from the bottom under general, Kim, Kalia, and Cameron. Dad? Circle my mom under health, and uh, pray, pray for my hip to heal correctly. And to be in prayer for my mom, she's not in here right now, but uh, she's progressively getting worse. And uh, her muscles are weakening, and now her, I, I don't understand how to explain it necessarily, but it's weakening to the point where her eyes are starting to lose control. She's seeing double, and her eyes are making strange movements, and she's getting weaker as far as walking, and eventually the doctor says she's going to lose her ability to swallow. Uh, so just be in prayer for her, and uh, pray that God gives her grace for sure. Anyone else over here? Brother Paul. Okay, what is what's their names or the family name? Okay, pray for Victoria's family for comfort. Victoria's family for comfort and for Paul to be able to go down to the funeral. All right, is that everybody? We yes, brother Carl. Yes, Rocky Johnson. Health and healing. All right, we'll break, break up into groups and pray. Let's meet back here at 730. So if you can find someone to pray with, that'd be, that'd be great.
Amen. If you got a songbook, 423, one more song before the preaching, 423, the solid rock will stand. We'll sing the first and the last. And uh, this is a song Dakota doesn't have an intro for, so she's going to give me one note and we're going to jump into this thing. It's going to be exciting. So, four, two, three, first verse. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On that fourth, when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. All right, let's give Dakota a hand. She did a good job. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, let's shake hands, and then we'll get to the preaching. All righty. We'll find a way back to our seats. All righty. We'll find our way back to our seats. See how we do. I'll try to get you out of here by eight o'clock. But uh, nine. Are we? We'll see. We'll see how we do. Deuteronomy chapter fourteen. Of course, a couple weeks ago we finished our series on Elijah. Last week I preached a sermon on Elisha, and I'm still up in the air about if we're going to start another series. But uh, some someone asked me a question recently about a certain topic, so I thought it'd be a good time. To teach on it, and uh, we have, uh, man, in the last year, we've we've gained some some new church members or some uh, baby Christians here in the church, and they've never been taught this concept. So I want to take the opportunity tonight to teach it in uh, Deuteronomy chapter fourteen and verse twenty-two. Deuteronomy fourteen and verse 
22. It says, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn and thy wine and of thine oil and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if it, the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, uh, when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then thou shalt turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. And the Levite that is within thy gate, uh, gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all thine tithe out of thine increase the same year, and shalt lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come, and they shall eat and be satisfied, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand. Which thou doest. And let's pray. Lord, I thank you for being a good God to us. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for these people. I thank you for your word and I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I pray, Holy Spirit, you do a work in the hearts of the people tonight. Help us to understand uh, what you're trying to teach us through your word and the examples that you give. In Jesus' name, amen. So the Lord is teaching his people the principle of tithing in Deuteronomy chapter 14. And you have to remember in the story, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses is still leading them through the wilderness. They got to the promised land, but fear and unbelief kept them out of the promised land, though Joshua and Caleb both said, we can go in, we can take it, though our God is strong and he is able. Uh, the, the other ten spies says, it's too much for us, the people are too big, the cities are, are walled, and there's no way we can do it. So because of their unbelief, they were caused to wander in the wilderness for another 40 years until everyone who was 21 and older died and then everyone 20 and younger was able to go into the promised land and take it. And uh, so currently in their current situation they are journeying through the wilderness to the promised land. When they stop, everyone stops. When they set up a camp, everyone sets up camp. And we're talking millions of Jews. They are relatively close one to another. When they set up camp, everyone's relatively close to each other. So the Lord is preparing them for the promised land. One day there will be a temple, there will be a storehouse, and one day the people will be asked to travel there, and if they, if, if they can, and bring their tithe and have a feast at that place that God is going to choose. Now we know that that place became Jerusalem. That was the place they were supposed to go and to bring their tithe. But the Lord was also making provision for those who had so much tithe they couldn't carry it. He was saying, if you have so much tithe, so much increase that you can't even carry it, there's no way you can get it there, then I'm going to make a provision for you. You can convert that into money and then you carry the money with you. And when you get there, you buy the things and then uh, that's how you're going to tithe. Or those who couldn't travel that far, um, they, there's no way they could make that trip with all that increase. They were able to convert it into money and to bring it to the place and then use that money to buy their tithe. And they were to bring an equal amount of money and to carry that money to the place, then tithe um, off their increase. Notice here that tithing, not tithing was never an option. God's like, oh, it's too far. It's too hard. You can't afford it. So don't know. That wasn't the option. The option was make it happen. <laughs> you know, you got to make it happen. And God wants his people to tithe. And uh, he did in the Old Testament. And he also wants them in the New Testament. If you have your Bibles, look at uh, Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. And verse 23. Jesus is rebuking the Pharisees, the religious Jews. 
and the scribes. He says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have done, and not leave the other undone. So in the middle of this sermon where he's rebuking the, the scribes and the Pharisees, he's saying, woe unto you, you're a bunch of hypocrites. You tithe on the little things, and uh, you tithe on the spices that you get, but you leave the heavier, weightier things undone, like judgment and mercy and faith. And he goes, but you ought to have tithed on those little things, but not leave the big things undone. So here we see that Jesus is confirming that we ought to tithe. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, the Apostle Paul, as he writes to the church in Corinth, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and verse 1 and 2. He says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order uh, to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. So Paul saying, as concerning the collection, you know, we call it the offering plate, the collection plate, whatever. He goes, I want to tell you something that I've already commanded the churches in Galatia. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Paul wasn't a fan of special offerings. He wasn't a fan of having a give it all Sunday. He said, just bring your tithe every, every week. On the first day of the week, just bring it then so we don't have to have any special offerings. And aren't you glad we're part of a church we don't have very many special offerings? I'm, I'm glad. When I was in Bible college, they'd have special offerings for the bus ministry, and they'd be like, all right, who's, we're going to raise $5,000. Who can give 100 And they'd get people, who can give 50 Who can give 20 Who can give 10 Who can give 5 All right, we need 10 more people to give $100. Who can do it? Who can do it? And the, to me, that's not, the, you know, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, right. not someone who's pressured into giving and gives because they feel bad. If you're going to give, give because you want to. That's what the Bible teaches, but we ought to give because God wants us to. And uh, God does not command his children or uh, to tithe or to bring their tithe. Um, okay, so God does not command his children to tithe or to bring their tithe when they assemble because he needs money. Did you know God's not broke? God does not need your money. The church, now I've heard preachers say, well, you need to tithe go, we can't pay our light bill. We can't pay our oil bill. We can't pay this. We can't pay that. And, you know, that's true in a sense. But that, those are God's bills. And God can pay his bills. He can. Uh, God does not need your money. Tithing teaches us an important principle and teaches us important character traits that God will bless. And uh, God does not command us to tithe because he needs it. God commands us to tithe because we need it. We need it. Important principle number one, everything belongs to God. Everything. Look at Psalms 24 and verse 1. God is trying to teach us something as believers. Psalms 24 and verse 1. The Bible says, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. The earth is the Lord's, everything that fills the earth is the Lord's, and the people who inhabit the earth are the Lord's. What's the Bible say? What know ye not? That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we are bought with a price, and your body is not your own. We belong to the Lord. 1 Corinthians 10, 26. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Look at Psalms 104, verse 24. Psalms 104, verse 24. O Lord, how manifold, how many are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of whose riches? Thy riches. Not my riches, thy riches. The earth is full of his riches. Everything belongs to God. The oxygen we, believe, we breathe belongs to God. The gold and the silver that you don't have <laughs> belongs to God. And uh, he, let's just keep the money because it's not worth anything. And uh, the paper money. The houses and the lands and the livestock, it all belongs to God. Everything. You're, I don't care what it is. Everything on this planet belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. And God will test us with increase. He wants to see if you will be a good steward 
of his riches. He gives it to you to see how you're going to use it. The Bible clearly teaches us what a tithe is. In Genesis chapter 28, when Jacob made an oath to God he gave, to give him a tithe, he says, I'm going to give you one-tenth of everything that you increase me with. A tithe equals 10%. A tithe is 10%. A tithe of our increase belongs to God. That's 10%. But we also know that 100% of everything belongs to God. 100%. So, this is what brought on this sermon tonight. Someone asked me about the, the government cheese the state of Maine is, is sending in the mail. And, uh, and I know, we were checking for our government cheese. And they asked me, do, you know, do I have to tithe off that government cheese? And uh, so, that, that, brought along, that brought along this sermon. Because everything, I know the government sent it to you, but everything in this world belongs to God. So, if you get your your check from the state, $850, how much of it belongs to God? All of it. 100% of it. $850 of it belongs to God. But how much does God allow you to keep? 90%. All right, so all of it belongs to God. $850, the whole thing. When you get a paycheck, when you get a check at the beginning of the month, whenever you get a check, all of it, 100% of it, belongs to God. But he allows us to keep 90% of it. How much does God allow us to keep 90%? It all belongs to God, but God trusts us with the 90%. So when I got my check from the government, 85 of it went to God right off the top. 765 of it went to my wife. And uh, Okay, maybe not. Praise the Lord. But if you rob God of 10%, of his money, he will curse the other 90%. So this is tithing. When you get a check, how much of that check belongs to God? 100%. 100%. How much does God allow you to keep of his money? 90%. 90%. If you keep the 100%, he curses it. That's what the Bible teaches. The 90%. Right, well, let me say this. That's why people are God's people who do not tithe are always broke. The 90% would not only last, but would be more than enough. It would overflow and be more than you need to survive on if you would just give God the 10% he requires. If you refuse God his 10%, he will not allow the 100% to be enough. That's how God operates. And uh, look at Malachi 3 and verse 6. And if before you say, you're just a money-grubbing preacher, let me just say this. I, I preach the word of God. And I don't get any more money because you tithe. But I say this, because I tithe, I have plenty. And it's not because of what you give. You don't pay my salary. God pays my salary. And uh, so it's not about money or being a money-grubbing preacher. And uh, I think probably once or twice a year I preach on tithing. Some churches, man, you get that every time they pass the plate. I'm not worried about money because it's the Lord's. Look at Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means if he required something of his people uh, before and he hasn't said you don't need it, like, for instance, the sacrifices where he clearly, clearly tells us Jesus Christ was offered once and for all. You don't have to sacrifice bulls or goats or lambs anymore because Jesus Christ fulfilled that part of the law. Then we don't have to sacrifice. But there's nowhere in Scripture where you see where he says you no longer have to tithe. So as God's people, we should continue that. And he says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers ye have gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, the Lord of hosts, uh, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? So he's saying, the Lord of hosts says, hey, I want you to return to me. You haven't kept my ordinances. I want you to return. And they ask the question, how, how can we return? And he says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. 
Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open uh, you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. You cannot live off 100%. You can't. You will live paycheck to paycheck. You'll always be broke. You'll be in trouble. With bill collectors, the 100% will never be enough. But if you trust God with his money that he trusted you with to begin with, the 90% will be more than enough. And I know it doesn't make sense, but I trust me, I have lived the life of a Christian who did not tithe. How many cars did we go through, babe? <laughs> like the first three years of our marriage when I thought I couldn't afford to tithe? We went through like 12 cars. And none of them were Fords. <laughs> I mean, they were all different types of cars that broke down. But man, once we got serious, God got my attention about tithing. He is just blessed, and we've always had enough. Uh, God will bless. If you trust God with his money that he trusted you with, the 90% will be more than enough, but the 100% will never be enough. Look at Luke chapter 6. And uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Ooh, I think I wrote down the wrong verse here. I've got to Google it real quick. Luke 6.38. Oh, I'm in John. That makes sense. Matthew, Mark, Luke. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I was like, man, alive, that was not what I wrote down. Luke, Luke 6.38. It says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. And running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you. Again, give. And it shall be given unto you. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And verse 6. But, I, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You cannot afford not to tithe. Because God blesses tithing. And if you don't tithe, God will curse uh, not tithing. You are playing a game with God that you will never win if you refuse to tithe off uh, the 100%. 100% belongs to God, and he allows you to keep 90% of it. That 90%, with God's blessing, will always be more than enough. The 100% with God's curse will never be enough. So you have to realize, every time we get increased, every time we get a paycheck, every time God gives us something, he is testing us to see if he can trust you to be a good steward of his money. Amen. If he can trust you with his money... Guess what he does? He gives you more money. If he can trust you with his money, he gives you more money. Look at Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Starting in verse 14. Of course, this is a parable that has several different applications, but we're going to look at one of them tonight that goes with the, with the sermon. Uh, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So this man calls his servants, he gives one five talents, he gives one two talents, and he gives another one talent. And then if we go look down here in verse uh, 20, and so... Uh, 
And so he that had received five talents came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. And the Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou hast deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which hath received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou were a hard man. And started making excuses. And guess what? If you don't tithe, I'm sure you have lots of excuses too. And uh, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not uh, strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money into the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the, listen to this, take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath five talents. For unto everyone that shall be given, or for everyone that hath shall be given, and and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. So this is the truth I want to pull from this. God, if can God trust you with his money? Can God trust you with his money? Everything is the Lord's. Can God trust you with his car? Can God trust you with his house? Can God trust you with his pet? Unless you have a cat that belongs to the devil. And uh, but <laughs> Just kidding. Can God trust you with his money? If you do not uh, tithe, that's why the Lord takes away the 90% that was yours to keep and will give it to someone else who already seems like they have plenty. That's the truth. God is, hey, 100% will never be enough. But if you uh, give God his 10% of the 100% that already belongs to him, the 90% will be more than enough. Because God takes away from the people who do not trust God with his money, and he gives it to those that he can trust. Lastly and quickly, tithing teaches us these Christian virtues and Christian traits. Number one, tithing teaches us accountability. Accountability and responsibility. We are responsible with God's money. Because it all belongs to God, and God says, I'm going to give you this much money, I want you to give me 10% back. And you can keep the 90%. When you faithfully... Give God his 10%. You are showing that you can be accountable and uh, be held accountable. It gives us discipline. You know, one thing that we lack is the ability to bring our bodies under subjection and discipline ourselves enough so that we do what we do not want to do. No one gets up in the morning and wants to do 100 push-ups, except for Brother Paul because he's crazy. Uh, But no one wants to necessarily go to the gym and work all, all their muscles. But when they do it, it shows, and that discipline will have an effect on them. Well, God wants us to be disciplined. That's what a disciple is, a disciplined one. And uh, he wants us to bring our bodies under, because our flesh does not want to tithe. But when you tithe, you are practicing discipline. Honesty. How can you be an honest person if you're robbing God? So, honesty. Uh, diligence. Being consistent with it. Uh, faithfulness or being loyal to the the truths that we are taught in God's word and also trustworthiness, being able to be trusted. If you do not tithe faithfully, you do not possess these qualities in the eyes of the Lord. That's why it's important. So what I want to teach you tonight is, number one, everything belongs to God. And if God gives you something, he's trusting you with his riches. And he says, I want 10% back. You can have 90%. But if you look at your bills and you look at your money and you say, Lord, I can't, I can't do it, that just shows a lack of faith in the Lord. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what we need to do is get what the Lord gives us and say, all right, Lord, this all belongs to you, but here's the 10% that you require. And you will be shocked at what God can do through your obedience. And if you decide not to tithe, that's what, you know, I don't know who gives and who doesn't give in the church. I don't want to know. But um, one, I'm thankful for the ones that do. And two, I've never had to counsel one in financial turmoil when the first question I ask is, do you tithe faithfully? And they, they say, no, I need to. 
I've never counseled one person in financial turmoil who ties faithfully. Never. I'll, I'll use an example. Uh, you know, brother, I think of Brother Tim. When him and uh, first started coming to church, you know, he didn't have money. And he was one of those folks that the church would help out from time to time because he didn't have money. But then he got victory over some things, and he got holding down a job, and he started getting paychecks. And guess what he started to do by faith? He started tithing. And now 10 years down the road, he's the one that gives me money to help other people. Who did that? God did that. But it took his first step of obedience. He obeyed God, and God started to bless. And uh, God is not a respecter person. If he does it for one person, he'll have to do it for you. But if you keep holding God's money and not giving him his 10%, that, that bag that you have is going to have holes in it. That work that you do is going to be for naught. It will never be enough. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for being such a good God to us, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your church. Thank you for your people. Lord, I thank you for the blessings that you do give us. Help us to realize that everything belongs to you. But you trust us with 90%. You don't trust us with 100%. You trust us with 90 And, Lord, if we will give you your 10%, you will bless the 90 If we keep the 100%, you'll curse it. And, Lord, you'll take it away from us and you'll give it to someone else who you can trust. I thank you, Lord, for uh, what you're going to do now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll have a, hey, babe, could you come? We'll have a, an uh, invitation. Um, I want to see if we're going to have a baptism or not. So let's all stand to our feet with our head bowed, eyes closed. If you have to go, uh, you are welcome to. But uh, the altar's open if you need to use it, and uh, we'll have a time of invitation. I know it can be scary. Money's already tight. The car needs a sticker and an oil change. The furnace is making a funny noise. And you think, I can't afford. I can't afford to tithe. But the truth is we can't afford not to. God can take that 90% and increase it so much that it's when you press it down, it still overflows. But if we're not willing to trust God with his money, then he just takes it away and he'll give it to someone else that he can trust. Lord, I thank you for being such a good God to us, Lord. I thank you for this church. I thank you for these people. And Lord, I just pray that you would use the message tonight to do a work in our hearts and those that aren't being faithful to tithing, I pray that they were challenged tonight and not only see um, the commandment, but the why behind it. And uh, Lord, I thank you for being such a faithful God to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated. Uh, Jess is getting ready to be baptized, so we're excited about that. And uh, do we want to sing a song? or Brother, Brother Carl, will you come lead us in a song while we get ready? How many we sing? I'll sing. Don't stop till I get it. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded language float. Be of sin the double cure, save from wrath and make me pure. Could my tears forever flow 
Could my zeal no longer know These for sin could not atone Thou must save and thou alone In my hand no price I bring Simply to the cross I cling While I draw this fleeting breath My eyes shall close in death When I rise to worlds unknown And behold thee on thy throne Rock of ages cleft for me Let me hide myself in thee Anybody got a favorite? Uh, the word for the evening sermon. Oh, wait, wait, I think we're ready, Brother Carl. Oh, good, because I didn't know that one. Christ's death. 